Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the internal kidney anatomy and ultimately how we get uh, urine from the kidney ultimately into the bladder, and then we'll talk about micturition, which is urination, in a separate video. Okay? Now, these structures which we talked about in the anatomy video, these are renal pyramids. Okay? The renal pyramids contain millions of collecting ducts. Okay? Um, the collecting ducts are going to kind of merge together slowly but surely into a structure we call the papilla of the renal pyramid. So remember, we've got millions of nephrons, and so we've got, therefore, millions of collecting ducts, and they're all going to kind of run in the direction toward the tip of this arrow right here. Now, eventually, we're going to get to this kind of lighter region right here, and we're going to have the a convergence of many, 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 many collecting ducts. And this area right here, where it's kind of whitish, that's called the papilla of the renal pyramid. I'm actually going to go to a different one down here because it's a little bit better to see this, and I also have it labeled. So here I'm looking down at this renal pyramid right here. Um, again, we can see that these collecting ducts are actually moving in this direction toward this whitish region, which is really the papilla of the renal pyramid. And what we see here is, again, these collecting ducts collectively, no pun intended, are actually moving toward this region, and they are going to collectively empty their contents into this region right here. Now this region right here, um, that I actually have the arrow on, actually zoom fully out, this is actually what's called the minor calyx. So the papilla is kind of just the region where the collecting ducts sort of get to their final point before they empty their contents into the minor calyx. Okay. But the minor calyx is really the first point where we actually have a collection of urine from multiple collecting ducts. Okay. So each collecting duct, they run independently up to this region called the papilla, but they sort of dump their contents, and all the contents of all the collecting ducts is going to be collected in the minor calyx. And so we have urine now in the minor calyx. No more filtration, no more reabsorption, no more secretion is occurring. This is the urine that's going to empty into the toilet. Okay? Now what you'll notice is each renal pyramid has its own minor calyx. So this renal pyramid, here's its minor calyx. This renal pyramid, here's its minor calyx. The one labeled is number five. Okay? They all have one minor calyx. But there's going to come a point where multiple minor calyces are going to merge into a major calyx. So a major calyx, which is shown right here, this is one of them, is a point where multiple minor calyces merge together. Okay? So this would be one uh, major calyx right here. We might have another one right here. It looks like here's the, the merger point between the minor calyces of this one, and this one, and possibly these two over here. Again, kind of just a general region, but wherever you have two or more minor calyces converge, that is a major calyx. Now, this region that's really number four right here, this is actually what we call the renal pelvis. So the renal pelvis is kind of really in the hilum region of the kidney. And what I'll say about this is we have multiple major calyces that are fusing, and the place where the major calyces fuse is called the renal pelvis. Okay? So let's regroup there. We have one minor calyx for each renal pyramid, and again, the minor calyx is going to be where each of these millions of collecting ducts dumped their contents, and then each minor calyx, they're going to merge together with other minor calyces to form a major calyx, and then multiple major calyces are going to merge together to form the renal pelvis. There is only one renal pelvis, and as the renal pelvis kind of uh, moves out of the kidney, out of the hilus region, it becomes continuous with the structure that we call the ureter. Okay? Now this kidney right here, this is the patient's left kidney. Okay? Um, so this would actually be the left ureter. So there is a left and a right on the ureter. If we look at this, zoom out way more, what we see here is the ureter extends all the way down here. This would actually be the right ureter. Okay? And it extends all the way down here to the urinary bladder. And again, we're going to have a ureter for each of the kidneys, so a left and a right, because we have a left and right kidney. Right? So this down here is the urinary bladder. 
the urinary bladder is going to be the storage site for urine. Now, in this video, I'm not going to discuss urination yet, but I at least want to cover the internal anatomy of the urinary bladder. Okay? Now, this right here, I'll just go ahead and say this is a a male bladder, and the reason I know that is because this structure down here is the prostate. Women do not have a prostate, um, only men do, and that's something that we'll cover when we look at the male reproductive system. Okay, So this is actually the inside of the bladder. They've actually This would actually be a frontal section, coronal section of the bladder. Okay? This is the bottom, the distal part of the right ureter. This would be the distal part of the left ureter, and so we have to imagine that urine, it's no longer filtrate, urine is actually moving down the ureter. It will go down here and then exit into the bladder where it is stored. I want to mention something that can be kind of confusing. These holes right here, this one and this one, those are not actually anything. Those are actually just so you can stick the front half of it on there on the model. But these holes right here where I have an arrow at, these are called ureteral orifices. Okay. So this is the right ureteral orifice, and what that means is it's a hole through which when the urine comes through the right ureter, it e enters into the bladder through this hole. This one over here would be the left ureteral orifice, so that means urine coming from the left ureter would go through the wall here and exit into the bladder through this hole. Okay. You should be aware that it is a ureteral orifice because it is coming from the ureter. Okay, or it's associated with the ureter. That is different from a urethral orifice. Okay? So again, we have the contents, the urine, stored inside here, but when we are ready for urination, notice that there's this um, space right here that's normally regulated in terms of its width. Okay? This is actually called the internal urethral orifice. Okay? So if I was to urinate, that means that the contents would have to pass through the internal urethral orifice. And again, I say that its width or diameter is regulated because we're not always urinating. So most of the time you'd want this orifice to be closed. Okay? And I will mention, although it's a lot longer than this in men, and even women I should say, um, this region distal to the bladder where urine goes through to exit is called the urethra. And there are different regions of the urethra in males, but generally this would be the urethra. Now, I do also want to go over the inside of the bladder here. There's not much else to it, but you see these folds inside the bladder. These are called rugae. If you remember back to digestive anatomy, when we looked at the stomach, the stomach also had rugae. Do you remember what the function of that was? it was to allow the stomach to expand. If you've got these wrinkles here, these folds, that allows the bladder or the stomach, if we're talking about the digestion, allows it to expand. And as the bladder expands, these rugae would kind of stretch and, and disappear. Okay? But the fact that it's kind of folded and wrinkled like that, that's when it's in its compressed state, Okay, when it's in its small, non-expanded state. But if we were to fill this bladder more and more and more, the bladder would actually get bigger and bigger a little bit, and we'd see these rugae partially disappear. So these rugae just allow it to expand, because as we know, the bladder's job, that is the urinary bladder, is to store urine, and it can store a little or it can store a lot. This region right here, which is sort of a triangle, is what we call the trigone. Okay? The trigone is really just an area that's kind of bounded by three regions. One, it's bounded by the right ureteral orifice. Over here, it's bounded by the left ureteral orifice. And then down here by the internal urethral orifice, so the three orifices. And it's really just a spot where the urine initially is going to collect. So if you imagine the bladder initially empty, if urine comes in through the right and left ureters, it's initially going to uh, move into this area called the trigone. But that's really just a general area. Um, there's not really much physiology that goes on with it. It's just a landmark, but it's bounded by these three points. Okay? And in one of the next videos, probably at the end of this playlist, we'll actually discuss how urination occurs. It's actually called the mictruition reflex. And it's actually a little bit more complicated and more to it than you might originally think, but we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about the general regions of the urethra in males, because males have a much longer urethra for obvious reasons. Right? So hopefully this video helped you out. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.